Hello, this is Clay Sterling reporting for WSEH Channel 6. Yesterday afternoon, a group of high school students encountered a military munition in a field near a 600 home subdivision. This area is near several schools and shopping centers. After hearing about this incident, we did some investigative research. We'd like to start this report by sharing some of the history of this neighborhood, which led to this unexpected but potentially dangerous encounter. We'll begin by identifying the munition encountered and the reason it was there. To provide some expert insight on the subject of military munitions, we've contacted Army Active Reserve Colonel Carl Lane, who lives near the area to help explain things from a military perspective. Welcome, Colonel Lane, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Clay. We know that explosive ordnance disposal personnel have identified the munition as an 81 millimeter mortar that has failed to function when fired. Can you help us understand how a military munition might end up in an area where families live and play? Certainly. This incident illustrates the need for public awareness concerning the three R's of explosive safety. They are recognizing the threat, retreating from the threat, and then reporting it so it can be safely addressed. Let me start by explaining what these students encountered yesterday. This munition is what military refers to as unexploded ordnance, or UXO. The mortar shell they encountered dates back to World War II and was designed to travel up to 2.3 miles from the firing point. It contains over a pound of explosives. This particular shell failed to explode on impact as designed it pierced the ground and became buried all these years. Had the students disturbed this munition by attempting to pull it out of the ground, it could have exploded and killed someone as far away as a quarter of a mile. Well, Colonel, how do munitions like this unexploded mortar end up in areas like this one? Well, this subdivision, as you know, was developed over a relic World War II bombing or weapons range where they trained with the 81 millimeter mortar. The training of soldiers and testing of equipment has occurred on millions of acres throughout the United States, including our own community. Many of these former military installations and training areas like this one have been returned to the public, where parks, housing developments, and shopping centers industry now stand. So what you're saying is that these are confined to only prior military installations? No, military munitions may be encountered almost anywhere, from Civil War battlefields to our own homes. History buffs keep them as souvenirs of significant events. Soldiers keep them as war trophies. Regardless of where they are encountered, everyone needs to recognize that munitions are dangerous. Colonel, how could an ordinance like this be sitting in the ground for over 60 years without anyone discovering it? Well, although military conducted sweeps and removed most unexploded ordnance prior to releasing the land, some munitions like this one were missed. Technological limitations at the time and the large size of many of these former ranges made it impossible to guarantee that all munitions were removed. Erosion and land disturbing activities like development can expose these buried munitions. They may also be covered by vegetation or water and are occasionally encountered by civilians. This is what happened yesterday when these students encountered the mortar shell. Thankfully, they recognized it as a threat, they retreated, and they reported it to the authorities for safe disposal. Thank you, Colonel Lane, for that enlightening review of military munitions. Thanks for having me, Clay. We now want to take you to the location where the munition encounter occurred and hear from the students involved. We have Meredith May at the scene. Hello, Meredith. I understand that you're with the students who recognized the potential danger and notified the authorities? Hi, Clay. Yes, I'm here with the students who called 911 to report the munition, but I'm going to let them explain in their own words what they encountered and how they knew what to do with it. Right now we're standing on the field where Roger and Ronnie were playing catch and just a few hundred yards away is a neighborhood where these students actually live. But first I have here with me Roger who initially suspected he had encountered ammunition. Roger, can you please explain to us what happened? Sure. Well, I was just on the field with Ronnie throwing a football. One of his throws had gone a little high over my head so it flew into the tree line. When I went to go get the ball, I noticed what looked like an old, rusted, oversized bullet half buried in the ground next to where the ball was. I thought it looked like a bomb or something, so I took a picture of it with my phone. Then once you noticed this object, what did you decide to do with it? Well, I looked over to Ronnie and said, hey, I think I see a bomb or something. And then Ronnie, what did you do when Roger called out to you? 
Well, at first I thought he was just messing with me, but when I started to go over and Roger told me to stay away, that's when I knew he was serious. Then he left the woods really carefully, and after he was safely away from what he thought might be ammunition, we looked at the photo, but we weren't sure exactly what it was, so we decided to report it because we both felt that it might be dangerous. And how'd you guys know not to try and pick it up? Well, seeing the photo reminded me of a safety class from Scouts. The instructor told us that because the military once used this area, even unexploded ammunition might be encountered near the area. Well, that's certainly a great memory. And then once you realized that this could be ammunition, what did you decide to do with it? Well, just to be sure, I told Roger to send the picture to his girlfriend, Becca. Her mom is in the Army, so I thought her mom might know what we had encountered. So he texted her the photo, and she asked her mom what it was. But how long did it take for Becca to respond? Well, it only took about a minute or so. Becca texted me back saying that her mom thought it was probably an old military ammunition, but only an expert could tell if it was dangerous or not. She also told us not to touch it and to stay away from it. And then we also have here with us Rebecca, who was a part of initially contacting the authorities. So Rebecca, can you tell us what happened when Roger contacted you? I was surprised when Roger texted me because he knew he was working on my paper, but I guess he also knew I always keep my cell phone close to me. When I first saw the picture, I was like, why is he interested in a rusty old can? But I knew from his text that he wasn't messing around. And then what did you decide to do next? I called my mom to the room and showed her the picture that he had sent me. While she looked at the message, I did a quick online search based on his description in the picture. What I found was this old news article about an unexploded artillery shell that some kids had encountered, but when they tried to dig it up, it exploded, killing two of them. It was possible that what Roger and Ronnie had found was just like the ones the kids had disturbed. So then once you spoke with your mom, what did you decide to do? I texted Roger back, telling him that it looked like the dangerous ammo I saw online. He texted me back, telling me to ask my mom to report what they had seen. That's when we called 911. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us, and it turns out that was some quick thinking on your part. Well, as you can see, these three students used modern technology to help prevent what could have become a very tragic incident. Now back to you, Clay. Thank you, Meredith. It's good to know that everyone is safe and how these students reacted when they suspected that they had encountered ammunition. We contacted the fire department that responded to the 911 call that we just heard about. We have Fire Captain Atkins with us now to tell us more about the military munitions that these students encountered and give us his thoughts on this incident. Welcome, Captain Atkins. We appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Thank you, Clay, for contacting us about this very important safety issue. This particular incident was a textbook example of what to do should you suspect or know you've encountered ammunition. Now, this could have been a tragic occurrence. Yes, it could. But first, I want to congratulate the students for how they followed the safety rules that they'd learned. Had they not adhered to the three R's of explosive safety, recognize, retreat, and report, there's a good chance this would be a different story. This incident highlights the need to be aware and recognize that munitions can be encountered almost anywhere. If you ever suspect you have encountered a munition, you need to follow the three R's of explosive safety. Would you please clarify what the three R's constitute? Well, the first R stands for recognize. That is, recognize when you may have encountered a munition sometimes known as an ammo, a dud, or a bomb. And remember that munitions are dangerous. The second R stands for retreat. That is, do not touch, move, or disturb it, but carefully leave the area. You may want to mark an area nearby in some manner so that the authorities can find it after you leave. You could use a hat, a sweatshirt, or just break some branches along the path as you leave. The third and final R stands for report. That is, immediately report what you saw and where you saw it to a parent or adult. Adults should call 911 to notify the authorities. Is there anything else you'd like to add to your explanation? Well, remember, never underestimate the potential danger associated with munitions. Always take precaution following the three R's when you suspect that you may have encountered a munition. Thank you, Captain Atkins. We certainly appreciate your time and safety information. Thank you. I'm glad to help. This concludes our story, but I think we've all learned from this event that the potential for encountering munitions is quite real and dangerous. During our research of this story, we learned that there have been several incidents around the country that ended tragically because, unlike these students, people failed to follow the three R's. We'd like to thank Colonel Lane, and the military for the historical perspective about the military's use of lands throughout the United States for training. We salute 
Roger, Ronnie, and Rebecca for their astute awareness and for following the three R's of explosive safety. Lastly, thanks to Captain Atkins and all the other authorities who respond to these calls. These situations take cooperation and awareness from all of us. Please remember the three R's of explosive safety. Recognize when you may have encountered a munition and that munitions are dangerous. Retreat. Don't touch, move, or disturb it, but carefully leave the area. And report what you saw and where you saw it immediately to the proper authorities. I'm Clay Sterling, and this has been a WSEH Channel 6 Story Update. Thank you for watching.